Hi everyone, welcome back to my booktube channel, Lisa in Bookland, and welcome to a reading vlog. I've not do, done many of these at my channel at all, but um, I did one la around last St. Patrick's Day, and I just thought it might be a nice kind of annual uh, annual event for the Irish Readathon. So uh, this one is going to be a little bit different from last year because I'm actually on holidays. Even though I haven't travelled very far at all, uh, I'm still in County Galway, and like, Ireland is not a very big country. It's not like staying in the same American state. So I've just driven west 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 to in Connemara which is like the mountainous region to get to the coast and I'm staying in a lovely spot called Renville. I've been here before and I just love this hotel it's really kind of old uh, country house type hotel at uh, very reasonable rates uh, I, I think especially for solar travelers which is lovely uh, so I booked this a few months ago and I'd always planned that it would be kind of a reading retreat as it was last time however it's become even more so now I as soon as I finished work on Friday of course I started feeling like I had a cold just not very energetic at the moment but there's loads of nice places to lounge around downstairs beside fires and lovely armchairs and things so I'll get loads of reading done and also the weather is absolutely rubbish it's just raining constantly so I uh, yeah, will be getting out and about and uh, doing a bit of walking but uh, probably a lot of my time will be spent just uh, relaxing which is what this holiday is for so as to what I'll be reading so the thing about staycations is just that you could bring so many books because I have the car and you don't need to worry about luggage or anything so I've brought seven books with me but I won't go through them all now because I don't know how much I will get read I don't know if I'll be doing a lot of reading this evening because I am um, oh do you know coals I am tired even after that you know relatively short drive and I do want to watch uh, Dancing with the Stars on the television it's like the Irish rip off of Strictly Come Dancing but I do enjoy it but yes uh, I think after that I would be start into a bit of this uh, which is Snow by John Banville it's kind of a thriller type novel I really enjoyed his quirk novels so uh, yeah I just think it'll be a nice uh, fast paced read to uh, get me off to a good start um, and then the other book that I actually am really really looking forward to part Partly because it is set in like an old country house like obviously um, you know in the past I thought it would be a good read is uh, Uncle Silas by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. I've not read any of his books yet and yeah I think there are kind of some supernatural elements to this book and I've heard that it's uh, quite scary so yeah just really looking forward to settling down with this one. So a book that I have been reading kind of on and off since the start of March and really really enjoying is this uh, compilation of the Oxford Book of Irish short stories so I really really just been enjoying reading a story now and then and I just uh, being on holidays I think it'll be perfect to read maybe a short story over a really leisurely breakfast in the morning. Stories move forward in time of when they were written or at least the author's birth date. I think it might actually be the author's birth date and um, so it starts off with kind of folk tales and then uh, the most recent one I think the author was born in 1960 or something so uh, yeah I'm kind of getting the one I have to read next is by Daniel Corkery uh, who lived from 1878 to 1964 so um, yeah kind of that bridging Victorian, Edwardian and even uh, uh, even more the 20th century period so I don't actually know when they're from I think that would have been nice if they'd included that in the stories as the actual publication date. Those are the ones I wanted to start with but I do have two historical fiction novels would it be me if there was no historical fiction here no but ones that I'm really really looking forward to so one was on my original Irish Readathon TBR and the other wasn't but the one that was on my TBR was this new release um, My Father's House by Joseph O'Connor it's set in the Vatican in the Second World War um, and it's based on a true story but the other book that was a late addition to my TBR and uh, I just am really really looking forward to it because I've seen it online but I never saw it in a shop and that is uh, the Ballad of Lord Edward and Citizen Small um, so the Lord Edward of the title is Lord Edward Fitzgerald who is most famous for being a leader of the 1798 United Irishman Rebellion and he had a friend and manservant called Citizen Small who was a freed slave um, you know obviously very little is known about his life this just seems like it'd be a really interesting book and it's written by Neil Jordan I didn't know that he wrote books I just know him of the as the director um, he directed uh, Michael Collins I don't know any of his other films but I know he did that one that's a great film so I, I believe he's wrote a good few more novels so uh, yeah I, I, I hope more of them are historical 
Um, do you know, isn't it disgraceful that I haven't read much or even don't even know an awful lot about the 1798 rebellion? Being so interested in the Napoleonic Wars, we did learn a little bit about 1798 at school, but not the background of the Napoleonic Wars, which it's, they're way more interesting if it's taken together. So uh, I just feel like that's the next history wormhole that I'm going to fall down. So uh, maybe this will kick it off. But yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to this one. And so that'll be coming later in the holiday, I think. So uh, yeah, so I am here for four nights. Um, so yeah, just really, really looking forward to some relaxation and getting a bit of reading done. So it's now Monday morning and how lovely not to be working. It's about half eight and I'm just about to go down to breakfast so that I can give you a quick update first on what I've been reading. Um, so I've really, really been enjoying uh, Snow by John Banville. I forgot how much I liked John Banville's writing because I hadn't read anything by him since the first book of the series, which is The Secret Gas Guests last March. And although I liked that book, it's probably because I thought it was about something else that it was actually about, um, which is why I didn't love it. But um, this is just what exactly what it says in the tin. It's just a really, really good murder mystery. Um, the main character, I just love the way that John Badwell kind of unashamedly writes about like posh people. <laughs> and I love the time period that he writes about as well. Um, like this book and the Quirk series, they're kind of set in like the 1950s, 1960s Ireland. Quirk, the main character of the other series he has, is from a very wealthy Catholic family in Dublin, have done really well in the New Republic. Uh, whereas this character is kind of the opposite in a way, but still say, shares many of the same kind of, I don't know, like poshness. <laughs> I don't know what other way to say it. But um, St. John Strafford, he's a detective inspector. And he's a very odd fish like Quirk, um, but in different ways, I suppose. He doesn't drink. He is one of the only Protestants, you know, at his level in the guards. It's still kind of the early enough years of the guards and everybody always tells him that he doesn't look like a policeman. But what they mean is he doesn't look like an Irish policeman um, because he is from the old, like, gentry classes, like Protestant big houses, which you know, are definitely past the decline at this stage. In, in this novel, he's sent to this big country house which is owned by uh, another man Colonel Osborne and his family who are you know a similar kind of situation the house is crumbling down apart around them and a, a priest that was staying there with them for the night has been murdered and obviously at this time in Ireland uh, the Catholic Church were really powerful and influential so uh, there's a big fear in this book of it getting out that a priest has been murdered or how it will be managed and there's cover-ups going on and uh, yeah just the supporting characters is looking like it's somebody in the house that did it so we're just uh, starting to uncover all of those different characters and uh, yeah they're just brilliant and John Badwell's writing and his characters are just amazing so uh, yeah really really looking forward to this I'm uh, on page 134 so nearly halfway through it and I probably will come back to this later but I am just about to go down to breakfast and as I said I think I'm going to read a, a short story over breakfast and then I think I'm going to dig into Uncle Silas. So it's now Monday night and I just said I'd give you a quick reading update before I went to bed. So literally just about half an hour ago I finished Snow and I absolutely love this book. I, I, I've said it before but I forgot how much I liked John Banville's crime fiction. In particular I've read way more of his crime than I've read um, his like other novels even though it's a funny The History of Loneliness which I really really loved by him um, deals with similar issues as this book but yeah just because I could see where it was going didn't make any less like impactful or tragic and uh, yeah just really really recommend John Badwell or Benjamin Black as he writes most of his crime fiction under if you haven't tried it already. The only thing I've been reading then is uh, Uncle Silas so I am about, yeah, I'm just about 100 pages into this and it's, it's different than what I expected. I don't think I've read a classic that was this dramatic for a long time. And I know it's, 
because the sensation of it, even though at the start there is like an author's note where the Le Fanu is like, this isn't a sensation of it, but like the lady definitely does protest too much. It's definitely a sensation of it. The main character, Maud, lives with her father, who's quite distant. Um, her father has kind of shown her in this secret cabinet and told her about this key that she can only open this cabinet only at some undisclosed future time. She's got kind of a an evil French governess called Madame La Rougiere. The cousin, a cousin comes to visit and she definitely knows some more but she's not letting on to Maud and there's lots of mysterious things going on. And a really fast read as well because it is so dramatic and yeah, it was definitely um, it's a perfect book to read here. It isn't funny like this one as well. They're both kind of session country houses and that's kind of where I am at the moment even though it's, you know, under nicer circumstances obviously. There was one quote I did enjoy in this book. A female relative is trying to convince Maud's father that he should remarry. And there's another reason, Austin, why you should marry. You have no eye for these things, whereas a clever woman would see at a glance and prevent mischief. So she would, acquiesced of my father in his gloomy, amused way. Maud, you must try to be a clever woman. <laughs> I really like that one. But uh, I don't think he really intended it to sound feminist. But that's kind of what it ended up feeling like in the end. Um, I do kind of, I rarely read a classic just in isolation, even though I probably will keep going with this one fairly full on, but I do like to have another book going at the same time. And uh, the book I'm going to read next, I think is uh, The Ballad of Lord Edward and Citizen Small. Um, so <laughs> I was kind of tipping between this and my father's house. <laughs> my father's house has some similar elements to snow in, the, in that they both involve grease. So I said I might need a little bit of a change. And uh, yeah, I just helped that this is actually blurbed by John Banville on the front. So uh, yeah, I just, that was the determining factor. So looking forward to reading some of this tomorrow. I haven't made up my mind what I'm going to do tomorrow yet. To this morning, yet to this morning I went to a walk, a lovely walk around the, around the uh, sea and lake here, sea and lake here uh, for about an hour and a half. And I was just completely, so, oh, I hate colds. They're just awful. But um, I think that's one of the downsides working from home, I feel like, since I've, I used to never get sick, but I feel like since I've started working from home, if I come into contact with anybody with any kind of bug, I'm just, I've no immune system. So I'll see you tomorrow and we'll see where I am with my reading then. So sadly it is much too cold and rainy and hailstony and everything to sit outside at the moment and, and read like I would usually do when I'm in such a nice place. But I said I'd give you a quick reading update. I'm kind of on my way to Clifton by the long way. I have just to have a look around the shops and things. But um, yeah, this morning I, re I had a really lazy morning and I was reading some more of Uncle Silas and it's really picked up. Um, something unexpected has just happened, which I think will change the book quite a lot. So uh, yeah, really, really enjoying this. I haven't actually started any other book yet because I've been engrossed in this. Um, I'm about 30 more pages past where I was before so um, yeah just uh, getting out for a while and uh, yeah I probably will spend most of the day finishing off this book and uh, there are some bookshops in Clifton so it would be very unusual if I didn't go to any and you should always support independent bookshops isn't that right so yeah.
Gaelic or Hiloro Gin de Hina, Scamagil Tori Classicacha, Agastra the Shimta and Megara Glor, and Tusma Achar the Shintera Shachthanafana. Hope you can join me live this St. Patrick's Day with music from the very best of Irish musicians and composers, both classical and traditional. So surprise, surprise, this is a bit of a book haul. I'm an absolute demon when I'm on holidays. The bookshops are different. They're often kind of cute little independent ones, as well as the one in Clifton I took a quick clip of. There was actually a really nice one called Books at War in Letter Frack, which I hadn't been to before. It's just, yeah, such a nice bookshop. So uh, yeah, I did pick up some books. In the spirit of the vlog and in the spirit of the month, I wanted to focus on just the Irish ones in this haul, but I did buy, I'll just mention them, the next two in the Shard Lake series, uh, the second and third books, because I'd be looking for them second hand and I just hadn't found them. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to buy them. So I just picked them up new all together. But uh, yes, on to the Irish books. First to the contemporary ones. The first I'm going to mention was definitely the result of multiple uh, mentions on Booktube, especially from Aoife for at Birds of Clover, and that's Trespasses by Louise Kennedy. Um, I know it's been nominated for the Women's Prize as well, which is really, really brilliant. It's about a teacher called Cushland, The Troubles in Northern Ireland, and I think she has an affair with a married man. And uh, yeah, I just is expecting this to be really impactful. Um, so the second one then is Sebastian Barry book. It's his new release, uh, Old God's Time. I recently read It's a Long Long Way and I absolutely loved his writing. The first Sebastian Barry novel that I'd read and uh, yeah, all, the, all of his novels sound brilliant to me. Um, there was something about this one. It seems to be a retired policeman that's moved into this castle or the, an annex to this castle and uh, yeah, I think a case from his past ends up coming up. It just sounded really intriguing. So another book that's got a lot of hype on booktube and was shortlisted for the Booker Prize last year is The Colony by Audrey McGee. I haven't read this book yet and I'm really, really intrigued too. I know it's kind of set on this island off Donegal and this French man and this English man um, end up meeting on the island for some reason. I think the French man is studying the Irish language um, which is still being used on this island and how the locals react react to his presence there. I was especially enticed to read it uh, just now when I made a Gwail Talk Theory and I've heard a good few people speaking Irish uh, just around today which is nice. The final contemporary then is uh, this one, uh, The Untouchable by John Banville. This was a completely random book I picked up by John Banville but obviously having just finished Snow and enjoyed it so much I just saw John Banville second hand for three euro and I said I'd pick it up. This is very different. This is about uh, that, that Cambridge spy ring um, and it seems to be focusing on that man who is looking after the Queen's picture collection. I know very, very little about that apart from what was on the crowd. Just anything John Manville, I think I'm just going to pick it up. Um, so just one classic to mention and this is actually thankfully not adding to my TBR because I've already read it and that's The Absentee by Maria Edgeworth. Um, I bought this because I read it on ebook before and I really, really loved it. I've read some Maria Edgeworth before like Castle Rock Rent for short stories but this is definitely the best one. This story focuses really on uh, Lord Calambra who is living in London with his parents Lord and Lady Clonbrony and all of those are Irish titles and they're Irish peers but they live in London and leave their estates in Ireland under the care of an agent. Uh, that was very, very common practice in Ireland, especially after the Act of Union in 1801. Lord and Lady Cabroni try to like live up to the London standard of living, but can't afford to do so. And uh, their son actually ends up feeling kind of guilty about how negligent they are to their Irish tenants. And he goes back to visit their Irish estate. Just a good story. And I really like the portrayal of Ireland and the Irish, even if they were a bit like diddly diddly in some parts. Uh, you know, Marie Edgeworth, they, she was one of the Irish gentry, but they lived in Ireland um, for time so she knew what she was on about. The last two books I want to talk about are non-fiction and the next book I'm going to mention I was delighted to spot because I recently visited Westport House which has a fascinating story in itself but that was like the seat of the Marquesses of Sligo which is a bit confusing because it's in Mayo. But yeah anyways the most colourful character of that family um, who just recently had to give up the house um, and that's a very interesting story itself I won't go into it here definitely visit if you're nearby it was the second Marquess of Sligo at uh, this moment and a uh, whole Peter Brown um, who lived from 1788 to 1845. So as far as I can remember just from the tour guide's excellent, uh, excellent description was this uh, man was very much like kind of a Regency book. He lived the high life in London. 
I think he knew Lord Byron. He was actually almost hanged for treason and was rescued in the most unlikely way possible. I, I won't even spoil it just because it's best to hear it from the tour guide's mouths or presumably this book if you did that, if you do end up going. He eventually ended up making this society marriage and his family needed the money to this young woman called Elizabeth Kelly. Um, who was very, very wealthy. All of her money came from sugar plantations in Jamaica, which are obviously run by slaves. So money from slavery funded Westport House for a very, very long time. He did eventually visit his father-in-law, mother-in-law in Jamaica, and is absolutely disgusted at the conditions of the slaves. And he actually became very involved in the abolition movement. Um, so yeah, I suppose he came good in the end. As soon as I heard that story, I'm like, oh, I really want to learn more about him. So i uh, delighted to have found this biography. And finally, uh, the last non-fiction book is uh, this book, Patient Endurance, The Great Famine in Connemara. As beautiful as Connemara is, and the mountains, and the bog, uh, it always makes me kind of sad as well, or like melancholy, I think might be a better word, because there, uh, um, there is just the sense of depopulation. Like, obviously, there's some areas that were never densely populated at all, but in some places, there's just so many kind of stone remains of cottages and in more recent times just kind of um, empty houses and yeah it just uh, that always makes me sad I suppose where those people are gone but uh, the famine obviously was a huge part of it. Uh, the land around here is not conducive to growing crops um, obviously it's really really rocky as you may have seen from some of the from some of the clips I've, I've shared so um yeah, I just I, I, I decided to pick up this book. It is always interesting to read local histories, especially when you visit a place a few times, I suppose. So uh, yeah, I'll be picking this one up at some stage as well. But yeah, thankfully this is the end of this bit the little book haul and the weather is brightened up, so I think I will go for a walk before I settle in for the evening. So yeah, talk to you later. So it's Wednesday afternoon and it's most definitely a reading day. It hasn't stopped reading since morning, but I've got loads of reading done. As uh, so the first update I have posted is I finished uh, Uncle Silas which is really really good so dramatic like I was saying before and so many twists the characters kept you guessing and just uh, yeah really really fun book so glad I read this and uh, excited to try more Sheridan the Fanny and I'd really like to try some of the stories like set in Ireland it, it, it came through kind of with the uh, the short stories I'm reading as well it does seem like a lot of Irish classic stories at least that I've read so far we are very focused on like death and the supernatural um, I kind of wish there was more supernatural in this. It's more kind of gothic than supernatural. I feel like the cover is a little bit misleading. But uh, yeah, I really like the dramatic adventures of Maud and Millie. Um, a character called Millie comes into her cousin later on and I just loved Millie. She actually reminded me a lot of Caddy from Bleak House, you know, that she's uh, not had the level of education or culture, which she's kind of ashamed, but she wants to like better herself. I loved that. And uh, yeah, just a great, great book. Yeah, an uh, absolutely super book then um, that I mentioned earlier. I'm uh, really, really enjoying it. I, I already know this will be a favourite of the year. And that is uh, The Ballad of Lord Edward and Sitch and small by Neil Jordan. I actually realised later that this edition is actually signed, uh, which is nice. But yeah, this is like the perfect book. So the book opens when Lord Edward is seriously wounded in a battle of the American War of Independence and he is rescued by this escaped sleeve called Tony Small. And as a result, I suppose, uh, Lord Edward ends up taking him under his protection and bringing him uh, with him when he leaves uh, Carolina. They end up going further afield and eventually back to England and Ireland. And uh, yeah, it's just Tony, the whole story is told from Tony's perspective and I'm about halfway through. It's just so fresh. But yeah, obviously he doesn't know an awful lot about how to be a servant, but he is like a very upper servant. Like in some, sometimes he gets to go riding or hunting with uh, who he always calls my, my lieutenant. But he is obviously an object of curiosity. I just love the interactions he has especially with all the other servants in the different houses he goes through um so the london house or leinster house in dublin lord edward is the son of the duke of leinster and the way he interacts with just 18th century society like he goes to plays in Drury Lane like while Lord Edward is at a play um, they, him and another servant called Cecil will go to the very top two tiers and they'll end up seeing at least some of the plays that way but, but because they have to be 
out of the horses again before uh, Lord Edward comes out. They uh, they always miss the end. <laughs> That's just brilliant. And uh, it actually made me really, really want to see or read some of these plays that uh, they talk about, especially The Tempest, because I haven't... Uh, I, I haven't read The Tempest, but um, he, there's a lot of references to it here about Prospero and Caliban, and I don't really follow them because I'm not familiar with The Tempest, but um, they also see the rivals, and uh, just Tony's perspective on the ending. At the moment, he's reading uh, Robinson Crusoe, which obviously is interesting as well. But uh, yeah, it's just a brilliant, brilliant book, and wonder wonderfully told. Um, it, it, I love especially the dialogue. Like, There's no speech marks at all, but the dialogue is so like snappy and perfect. It's just everything comes to life so well I just think it's a marvellous book there is a whole sense of foreboding throughout it because you know I don't like you know from history but also just it's it, 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 you know in the plot of the book Lord Edward is killed by this man called uh, Major Sir because he is committing treason against the British government by uh, being involved in the 1798 rebellion at the moment he's not involved with the United Irishmen yet but I it will be really interesting to see uh, Tony's perspective on his conversion that way because because uh, Lord Edward would be more involved from like the um, perspective of like equality, fraternity, liber liberty and you know the French way. Um, yeah sorry this is kind of rambly but I'm just enjoying it so much. Tony's narrative is so strong and, but yeah I can't wait to look at more books that Neil, jo Neil Jordan has written because uh, it's absolutely brilliant. And so alas it's my last night here so I had a lovely dinner and after dinner then I spent a long time uh, finishing off this book beside the fire and uh, yeah I'm not actually going to say too much about more about it here. I actually just finished writing out uh, the script for an individual book review that I'm going to do of this book. I absolutely loved it. It was brilliant <laughs> and everything about it. The friendship between Lord Edward and Tony was brilliant, like subtle, complicated, but just so well characterised. I love the way how we saw everything through his eyes. I suppose it's an awful big story to tell, the story of the 1798 rebellion, so it would be impossible to cover the extent of this book in as much detail if, if it was from Lord Edward's eyes, if you see what I mean. So it was just such a good choice to tell it through Tony's eyes. The characters, one thing, I, I can't remember whether I mentioned it before, but like theatre is such a big part of this book and it just, yeah, it just really made everything jump off the page. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I can't recommend it highly enough. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be looking out for more of Neil Jordan's books. Um, I, I still can't believe I didn't know he wrote books. Like, I just know Michael Collins, but that is a brilliant film. So uh, I suppose uh, maybe film directors do make good authors. Like, I can't think of any other examples, but I'm not that big, I'm not that up on my film directors. Let me know if you've read any Neil Jordan, um, because I really want to know where I should go next with his books. So I'm not that tired yet, I think I will have time for a little bit more reading. Uh, so I think I am going to start this book, My Father's House by Joseph O'Connor, and just see how far I get. And sadly, uh, my holiday is coming to an end, but thankfully tomorrow is Thursday, Friday is St. Patrick's Day, so we have it off as a bank holiday, and then I have the weekend, so I don't need to go back to work immediately, which is lovely. But uh, yeah, talk to you later. So home again, uh, all good things must come to an end, I suppose. I did have a lovely holiday and I got a good bit of reading done. I have to say I thought I'd do more, but um, probably the fact that there was a classic in there and I just wasn't feeling my best for some of the time. I was probably on a bit of a go slow mode. But yeah, I just said I'd fil film this closeout clip to the vlog. For most of today, when I haven't been driving home, <laughs> I've been reading uh, My Father's House, which is absolutely excellent. It centres around this priest in the Vatican called Monsignor Hugh O'Flaherty. It follows him and another uh, another members of a small group of, uh, of, I suppose, concerned people that are trying to help uh, refugees that are trying to escape from occupied Rome uh, into, I, I think, Switzerland. Um, so it's, yeah, I, I wasn't even sure I was expecting it to be so much of a thriller, but it's definitely working. And I think I spent like two hours just having a really long lunch today, just reading it because I wanted to know what happened. And it really picks off right from the start. They had planned on this man called Major Sam Derry, also a real historical figure to carry out this plan. But at the very first chapter, he's actually being brought urgently to hospital because his appendix has burst. So uh, yeah, their whole plan is in danger. And uh, yeah, big, big plot twist in the middle. Uh, which is just the suspense and just the depiction of Rome and the Vatican City is brilliant. I visited Rome once and this book actually makes me really want to go back. Obviously not to occupied Rome, but um, yeah, I suppose just the way that it's being described 
is absolutely excellent so uh yeah i can't believe this is my first dose for connor and uh yeah i just have to keep reading so i'm going to keep this clip short um so that i can go back to reading and find out find out what happens with their plan one thing i forgot to mention actually is while i was driving um i was listening to uh this audiobook the gathering by anne enright um, unfortunately this has been much less of a success i will say that it is the ideal book to listen to while you're driving because it's so literary um and not a lot happens that it doesn't really matter if you zone out for a few minutes or if you're trying to concentrate on something else or like go off and daydream for some reason so uh yeah i got halfway through this i just finished cd3 but i don't think i'm going to bother finishing it because i don't have any other driving plans to do for the next few days i do have the paper copy but it's just it's way too literary for me um like it's mildly interesting uh the narrator's uh, brother has just been drowned in england and she's trying to get his body home to ireland for burial but it really goes to her past to her grandparents passed uh their family is quite odd her mother isn't very caring and it's quite distant and she had a lot of children a lot of uh, children that didn't survive and yeah i don't know it's just not really the book for me so i don't know if i'd be that excited to try any more and then write i even though this book obviously must have some merch because it won the man booker prize in 2007 but yeah just not for me so uh yeah just to summarise, I suppose, in the end, I did read uh, just three short stories from this, actually. Um, I didn't really mention them because none that I read in the course of the holiday has really, um, you know, struck my interest or that I really liked. Like, possibly The Weaver's Grave by Seamus O'Kelly, but I thought that was maybe more interesting than entertaining, just because I, like, I, especially going through this collection, I'm just, like, thinking about the preoccupation that Irish people have with death and funerals and people's deathbeds we have a big national obsession with it the, the weaver's grave was all about these two grave diggers trying to decide where this person should be buried where their ancestors were buried and nobody could really think of where they were it's like oh do you know they were definitely buried like seven foot down but my, my own father <laughs> dug a few graves in his time so uh yeah it's just yeah it's, it's kind of an irish thing i suppose uh, but I'm definitely I, I'm definitely going to continue with this collection because I did enjoy some stories earlier in the collection. Just the last three or four I've read haven't really hit the mark with me 100%. That and My Father's House and The Gathering, I can say that I read part of them. I probably will DNF The Gathering. I, I'll confirm in my Mar March reading wrap up. But apart from that, I did finish three books. Uh, Uncle Silas by J. Sheridan Le Fadu, which was really good. Uh, Snow by John Banville, excellent, uh, yeah, real thriller type novel, really enjoyed it. And this one, which is definitely the highlight of the year so far, uh, The Ballad of Lord Edward and Citizen Small by Neil Jordan. So yeah, nice little reading retreat and the weekend isn't over yet. I still have the whole weekend to go, in fact. So yeah, looking forward to getting much more reading done. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this little vlog. Hopefully I managed to get some footage as well, even though I'm not sure how well the camera will have picked it up. But um, yeah. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday for my next video.